Kia ora tātou katoa, e tū ana hau i runga i te aroha me te nanaki, kia mihi kia tātou, kua hui hui mai nei. Um, it is a privilege that I've been asked to welcome you all formally here today. Um, we're here for a good kaupapa, a good purpose. We're here to solidify movements around the world that acknowledges that we as human beings are starting to wake. We're starting to wake up to oppressive infrastructure and systems that have been impacting on us all. And for that reason, I welcome us all here today and strongly acknowledge the mana whenua people of these lands here in Tamaki Makoto, which include the Ngāti Whātua and the Tainui Iwi and Hapu. Kia ora tātou katoa. Um, I stand here just as a concerned mother, really, for the future of my own children and your children and all the children after that. Um, I also stand here as a mokopuna who belongs to the lands and the people of Ngāpuhi and Te Rarawa Iwi in the north, in Taitokero, and also to the Tairawhiti Iwi of Ngāti Parau on the east coast. And that's all. Um, I offered up a statement um, which I plan to base my whole corridor on, which is that the Occupy movement can only be truly genuine or legitimate when it acknowledges the struggles of the colonised indigenous people of those very lands that are being occupied. Um, the very oppression that people are rising against now is linked to the ongoing colonial imperialism that has aff afflicted people around the world. And the movement, therefore, can only be strengthened with this analysis at its forefront. Occupy Wall Street, if we go there, as the genesis, shall we say, of this particular Occupy movement, we'll find that the native people of the Americas of Great Turtle Island, which is its pre-colonised name, extended very early generosity to the early white settlers and white people who arrived on their shores. Those people would not have survived without the generosity, the knowledge, the kinship and the partnership of the native peoples who knew how to survive in their harsh climates, who had that relationship with those lands for generations and centuries already, and who showed the early white settlers and the white people how to live. They also saw the benefit of partnership with those white settlers. However, what we know is that once the white people became stronger, and could start to stand on their own two feet without the assistance of the native peoples, they then proceeded to annihilate those peoples. They annihilated them because they became greater in spirit and definitely in number. Wall Street is a small legacy of a mindset of colonial imperialism of claiming land and resources for wealth, power and control. And it is from this ideology, actually, that the native people deserve to be treated like that because they were inferior. That is the underpinning of colonial imperialism. And that is uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable to confront for all of us and it is uncomfortable to admit to those parts, those embarrassing parts, of our global history. The same, that same ideology exists with the few who are now holding wealth hostage. If you have not gotten to the top with your wealth and collection of resources for your own benefit, then it's because you don't deserve it, you haven't worked hard enough, you're not greedy enough. And that is what the world is now waking up to. Another reflection which may dislodge your comfort zone is to think about whether or not this imperialism has so far 
benefited you. That reflection may be what is needed to understand where some of the cynicism towards the Occupy movement comes from. So the Occupy movement would do well to confront the fuller legacy that it seeks to now oppose. And to do any less would actually be to continue the oppressive status quo. We come now to Aotearoa, where there is the opportunity for this movement of Occupy to be real. Iwi and Hapu, right now and for hundreds of years, are fighting to maintain sovereignty over our whenua, our moana, our lands, our resources and our treasures. Tangata whenua have had to occupy lands that we have had a kaitiaki relationship with or a responsibility to care for that land because it gives life back to us. The Occupy movement here can only be strengthened by profoundly remembering Parihaka, Bastion Point Takaparafo, Motua Gardens, and all the many stands that have taken place to assert Tinoranga Tiratanga and Manamotu Haki, sovereignty over our own lands. These notions of Tinoranga Tiratanga, Manamotu, Manamotu Haki, are not to be feared, but I know they are. It is this fear that hinders us all from going forward and that has hindered the world. But with the Occupy movement, there is an opportunity to turn your back on that very fear. It goes back to the discomfort of acknowledging that my people lost land, language and life to colonisation. But we have to move past that discomfort. I personally am not interested in anyone's guilt it does me, or my family, iwi and hapu, no good. So we move past that while we challenge the existing oppressive capitalism because we're realising that in the end, it benefits no one. Tuhui deserve to fulfil their responsibilities as guardians of their lands in the Uruwera. And in trying to assert that, they have a right not to be punished by the long arm of the law. Te Whanau Apanui and my people of Ngāti Puro have a right to be asserting their knowledge and expertise of their lands and seas and at the very least deserve to be properly at the decision-making table to consider deep sea oil drilling in their own backyard. My people in Hokianga in the north, alongside Pākehā, who up there share the same concern for our environment and our harbour and who aren't threatened by its relationship with my hapu are leading the charge to get our waters cleaned up and face a hostile regional authority. The same goes for iwi and hapu in Taranaki. They are trying to maintain their accountability to all of our future and they are wanting to care for their waters of the Waitara. There, too, is an imbalance of power. And so instead, they are up against a short-sighted, narrow-minded worldview of planners and decision-makers who wish to continue to pollute our waterways. In Tauranga and Maketu, locally we are working hard to recover their ecosystem, their shoreline and their environment after the nasty mess of the Rena ship beaching itself. They have proposed plans that involve all the community having a stake in cleaning up the paru, the dirt. In Ngāpuhi again, my people are being forced into a rushed and foreign process of settling our treaty claims. Many of our whānau are still not informed or involved in this process. We've been waiting 100 years to settle our grievances and now all of a sudden we're being forced to settle it in an infrastructure that is not ours and in a process that is not ours. In all of those examples and many, many more, where is the power, control, exclusion and greed in any of those aspirations? Where is the racism that I have been accused of propping up whenever I speak of indigenous rights and sovereignty for tangata whenua? Where is it, I ask you all? Yes, Occupy Movement, Fight, why don't we all? 
Awaken those still slumbering. That is what excites me most about this opportunity. Be loud and clear that we have replaced basic human values with commercial imperatives. We have done this in a way that I'm not even sure capitalism itself intended. Values of caring for each other and the earth are values in all of our hearts, not just those who are indigenous or who have suffered colonialism. Make connections directly with iwi and hapū and Māori groups and support us in our causes. We need you, you need us. We need to fight together. We've been waiting for a long time for someone else to have our backs. When I was a little girl, my mother was in the black women's movement um, and we lived in the South Island. And my mother impressed upon me, and that was in the 80s, that Pākehā can really only be our allies if you firstly confront and claim your own identities. Only then can you look beyond and help others. When you approach battles with Māori, you may even get lots of slam doors in your faces and possibly hostility for it might be a bit of a time before people can actually trust what is true in your hearts. But eventually, if it is true in your hearts, Māori will see that. So it's a personal revolution as much as anything. And it will hurt because we've been bred since before we are born to need to consume things. And we've been bred to believe that we can only be a better person if we have more things. And I, too, am guilty of that belief. So it's going to hurt for a long time, but we all need to do it because at the bottom of all of our hearts is an innate knowledge that we need to look after the earth better. We need to join in solidarity with indigenous peoples and colonised peoples everywhere. We need each other. Tomorrow is the 5th of November. If you do nothing, remember Parihaka. If you know nothing, look it up. I'm not responsible for anyone else's education or ignorance. You need to take that responsibility yourselves. I have trouble keeping myself informed. To sum up, we all need to make a start and you need to tell everyone else who isn't. We need each other, as I've said, and the Occupy movement can only be strengthened if it acknowledges the full story and the full history of the places where it is taking place. I'm just standing here as one woman, but my analysis is informed by my parents, my elders, my upbringing with my iwi and hapu on the marae, my friends all around me, Māori, Pākehā, and from all different backgrounds, a strong group of Māori women around me. You could have had anyone stand here today and talk about this, but you got me, so I hope I've done a good job. I'm at the start of my own decolonisation process, and we all need to do that for ourselves. Let's fight. Kia ora tātou katoa.